Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 25th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, with your spirit. and welcome wherever you are as you join us on this 25th Sunday for the celebration of the Eucharist. We offer this Eucharist for you, for all your intentions, for those we have received, but the intentions too that you hold in your heart. In today's psalm, we respond, the Lord is close to those who call upon him. For the times perhaps we have failed to call upon the Lord or even think the Lord is absent. Let's now ask him for mercy, forgiveness, but most importantly, a real sense of God always with us when we call upon him. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And we pray. Glory to God in the highest, and on Amen. earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law, upon love of you and of our neighbor. Grant that, by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as high as the heavens are higher above the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is close to all who call him. The Lord is close to all who call him. I will bless you day after day and praise your name forever and ever. The Lord is great and highly to be praised. His greatness cannot be measured. The Lord, the Lord is, is close, close to all who call him. 
The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to anger, abounding in mercy. How good is the Lord to all, compassionate to all his creatures. The Lord, the Lord is, is close, close to, to all, all who, call who call him. him. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his deeds. The Lord is close to all who call him, who call on him in truth. The Lord, the Lord is, is close, close to, to all, all who call him. him. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brethren, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If it is to be life in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Open our hearts, O Lord, that we may listen to the words of your Son. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a householder who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into the vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went. Going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing, and he said to them, Why do you stand idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his steward, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the householder, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first, and the first last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. 
I'm probably going to date myself now, but I wonder how many of you remember the 1994 movie, Forrest Gump. Maybe some of you were only born in 1994 or after. Well, there were famous lines in that movie that people repeated over and over. Run, Forrest, run. There's a story told about Forrest Gump. He dies and he gets to the gates of heaven where he meets St. Peter. And St. Peter says to him, you can only enter if you answer these three questions. He said, fine, ask me the questions. He said, fine, the first question. How many days of the week begin with the letter T? And Forrest says, that's very easy. Today and tomorrow. And St. Peter says, well, that's not quite the answer I was looking for, but I'll let you pass. The second question, how many seconds are there in a year? And Forrest said, well, that's also easy. The 2nd of January, the 2nd of February, the 2nd of March, so there's 12 seconds. And St. Peter said, well, that's not the answer I was looking for, but I'll let that pass. But here's the third question. What is God's name? And Forrest says, that's also easy, Andy. And St. Peter says, Andy? Where do you get Andy from? He said, well, you know, when we were in Sunday school, we always used to sing. And he walked with me and he talked with me. So his name must be Andy. And at this point, St. Peter flings the gates open and says, You better run, Forrest, run. Now, it's a silly joke. It's a stupid story, perhaps. But there's a sobering undertone to the name that Forrest gives God. And he walked with me, and he talked with me. That line speaks to a fundamental part of our Christian faith, of our faith in God. That God is in relationship with us. God walks with us, and God talks with us. And it seems to me that all three of the readings that we hear this weekend speak to us of this relationship with God, with ourselves and with others. I want to suggest three things for us to reflect on. And the first one is that God is first and foremost relational. First and foremost. What does this mean? The very life of God is based on and in relationship. Think, for example, of the Trinity. Jesus called God Emmanuel, one who comes to live amongst us, God who is with us. You see, before anything else, God desires a relationship with us. God wants us, as we heard in that psalm, to be close maybe even closer than we want to be at times. Sometimes we block God getting too close because we fear perhaps what may be asked of us or we feel shame or anxiety about something or simply because we have grown up thinking that God is a doctrine or a law rather than one who desires to be in relationship with us, in a life-giving relationship with us. The second thing I want to say is that we are fundamentally relational. And it is in that way that we image God. We are told in the book of Genesis that we are made in the image and likeness of God. And modern psychology tells us how important relationships are with ourselves, with God, and then with others. 
And therefore, anything that damages or blocks or breaks a relationship with others or with God affects us fundamentally. Now let's apply this very challenging gospel text to our own situation, to our own context. Because I believe that's what the invitation is for us, to apply that text to our own context. And we will see that there are serious implications. We live in a country with the highest poverty rate in the world. But we also live in a country where 90% of our population is religious, the majority of which are Christian. You see, it's not capital that is important for God, but that every single human being feels valued and knows their worth. We know that through work, we express something of ourselves. We use our skills. We are creative. And God's desire is that all of us know our value and have enough to live. And I think that's exactly what Matthew is getting at in that gospel. On one hand, the generosity of God. But on the other hand, Matthew is telling us something very important. It's not about who works and who doesn't. It's about giving everybody equal opportunity to know that they are valued and that they can provide for themselves and their loved ones. In the gospel, justice is not about proportional recompense for what people have earned, but rather justice is about being in right relationship with others. Remember what we heard this morning from the prophet Isaiah. My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are above your thoughts. Our social economic gulf in South Africa indicates that the gospel's basic message of right relationship is far from our reality. And I think that this is a huge challenge and invitation for us because this is exactly where we are called to live out our faith in right relationship with God, with ourselves, and with others. And that brings me to the third thing I want to suggest we reflect on, that our idea of what is just and fair will continually be challenged by the gospel. You see, if we are in right relationship with God, we cannot but be in right relationship with others. Our very commitment to God, our relationship with God is expressed in the way that we relate to others. And therefore, if I am not bothered, if my conscience is not stirred by the huge gulf between the rich and the poor in this country, I cannot be in right relationship with God because it must have an effect on my relationship with others. If we seek to put things right as that landowner does in the gospel, when confronted with inequality or with broken relationships, then we enable relationship. And that's what God constantly does, enables right relationship. If we seek to heal what is broken, if we seek to share with the weak, then we not only witness, but share or participate in the bounty of God. In other words, we make God's relationship with us and the whole of creation visible and tangible. The scriptures today 
point us towards the inclusivity of God and not our human capitalist justice, but rather an inclusivity whose very root is found in our ability to be in right relationship. Our relational God is generous. Our relational God stretches the limits of mercy and compassion, pays those who work the least the same as those who work the most. We need to look beyond the physical paying of laborers, of workers, to what this parable really tells us about God's vision for us and our world. And so I want to suggest that there are some challenging questions that we can ponder today and in this week ahead. In what ways am I greedy or envious and not in right relationship with others and therefore not in right relationship with God? To what do I think I am entitled? And what do I think I have really earned? Our relationship with God has consequences for our relationship with others, especially those who are the least, the most vulnerable, the weakest amongst us. Do we really realize the consequences of being in relationship with God, being in right relationship with God and others? So let's now profess together our faith as we pray the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We have heard God's word spoken to us. Let's now join all our prayers as we ask the Lord for the grace to live in right relationship with him and with one another. Let us pray for the grace of tough love that we may speak the truth lovingly and honestly to those who are injuring themselves of, or others, especially the most vulnerable, and be willing to hear the truth spoken to us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for the unemployed, those who long for work to provide for themselves and for those who have lost hope, that we would do all we can to help others find gainful employment and be willing to give up our excess so that all people can live with dignity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for those who experience injustice and exploitation in their workplace, that God will free them from abuse 
end dehumanizing practices and help them unveil the unjust activities. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the healing of racial injustice, that Christians may work to restore relationships in communities, promote the dignity of each individual, and advocate for the truth about the consequences of structures and policies that enslave people and do not promote right relationship. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray in this month of creation, September, for a greater care for the earth, that God will help us to respect and be responsible stewards of the creation that has been entrusted as a gift to our care. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let's take a moment in silence now to bring our own prayers before the Lord, the prayer that is in the heart of each one of us. For these we pray, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, we thank you for your generosity and your love. We thank you that you hear our prayers and you answer them through and in that great generosity and love. And we make this prayer in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer. Fruit of the earth and work of our human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of our human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of all our lives may be acceptable to God the Almighty Creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all in His holy Church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through heavenly mysteries. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your word you created the world, and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son you gather men and women, whom you made for the glory of your name into one family redeemed by the blood of the cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore now, and for ages unending, with all the angels we proclaim your glory, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy. Holy. Holy, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, and so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. 
Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the cup of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion together with Francis our Pope, Buti our Bishop, Duncan his assistant, with all other bishops, with priests and deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the Gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. And grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, and with, all, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Masiti Amesia Kutumisa. Masiti Amesia Kutumisa. Masiti. Let's pray now in the words the Lord Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's spend a moment now praying for peace in our own hearts, in our families, our communities our country, and indeed our world. And we pray together, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. My sisters, my brothers, behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him, the one who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the Church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray.
graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption both in mystery and in manner of our life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So thank you for joining us today to celebrate this Eucharist. I'd like to say two special thank yous. The first one is to the person who's providing the music for us in the last number of months. That's to Cameron Upchurch, who's the director of music at Holy Trinity in Bramfontein. And we'd also like to say a big thank you to Monica Garzola, who has over a number of weeks now provided us with flowers for these Eucharistic celebrations. So we are very grateful. We've had months and months now of uh, celebrating the Eucharist with you online. And so we thank you for your participation, and most especially uh, for those contributions and the contributions of many who have sent us messages and emails. These are new ways that we are keeping in touch with one another. And so the Lord be with you. And, with your and may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace to love and to serve God by loving and serving one another. Thanks be to God.